So it was actually related to the breastfeeding. And uh, you know, sometimes when you breastfeed, you have lumps. So I had a lump that wouldn't go away and it escalated into mastitis. I had seen several doctors. So I went on two rounds of antibiotics and it didn't go. Right. So finally, I got referred to a surgeon who then uh, felt the lump. She said specifically, it feels gritty. It doesn't feel like a milk duct. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's cancer. And then after that, it just escalated into this horrible thing. Um, Because it took so long to diagnose, Mm -hmm. by the time they completed the whole biopsy and the process of finding out what it was, I was at 3C, stage 3C, and it was triple negative because of the age factor as well. Um, Actually, I took about two weeks because I went through a whole round of denial, I was afraid Mm -hmm. and I even went through the whole round, the whole process of trying out all the cure-alls that you can find on the internet. So I went through a seven-day process of drinking, baking, molasses, um, Uh you know, taking all kinds of things and, you know, trying to reduce the lump on my own Mm -hmm. but just didn't work. So finally, I just surrendered and walked in. Also because I had my family and my bosses then at the company I was at were very supportive and they insisted that you know you better go and get this treated right how long was treatment for you um well uh because it was so severe uh it was it was six months in total Mm -hmm. but i had to do 16 rounds of chemotherapy uh and uh half of the chemotherapy was every week i had to come in every week and then after that i opted for the most um radical of treatments i went for full mastectomy mastectomy without a reconstruction mm-hmm. and after that I went through 15 rounds of radiotherapy wow. following which I went back every two months for my follow-ups I think to be to be honest I am a workaholic so I think not working kind of makes me ill right. so it was very helpful to at least have something to do at home and feel some meaning it also gave me something to look forward to you know at when I comp- completed all my projects I could go back to work right. I think it would it would be much better, you know, it, w- it was much better and it did help in my recovery because of the work I was doing. Um, it was very simple. Honestly, they didn't need me to do the work. But the kind of work I was do- doing helped me feel that, you know, they wanted me. And that really gave me that spirit and motivation yeah. to, yeah, you know, get well quickly, get back to work so that you can do more. Well, huh. the younger one is uh, seven years old now. Mm-hmm. I think he's... Almost seven, he'll be seven in December. Okay. Um, so he cannot remember a thing. But my older one, he was three at that point in time. And he always remembers me without eyebrows, without hair, mm-hmm. and how pale I was. Um, and so we have photographs of each other. And, and I, I think he is a little bit traumatized by it. So he... I mean, he's nine now, uh, but he's very caring because of that. He will get drinks for me. Mm -hmm. He will worry when I take the wrong food and he'll remind me that, you know, mom, if you take that, you know, what if the cancer comes back? You know, mom, don't stress out so much. Don't work so hard. You know, what if the cancer comes back? So he was quite traumatized by it, actually. How did you explain it to a three-year-old, what you were going through? Or did you kind of not explain it at all? I, I, we have always been very uh, candid with our children, um, and you know, I never made any effort to wear a wig at home. You know, I used to walk around without eyebrows and without hair, and so he started to visually, you know, see the changes, physical changes in me, um, and then we also explain to him about death. Uh, what would happen and so he does understand that you know our life here is quite short and Mm -hmm. everyone will die one day so he understands it Um, and of course we hope to be together until we're old Um, but if something happens he is aware that death could happen anytime Mm -hmm. and he's well prepared for it I think for the first three months, especially when I was going through the tougher times of chemotherapy, um, I was like a super crybaby. I would walk into the kitchen, I would cry, I would drive, I would cry, I would see my kid playing and I would cry, right? So it took me some time, but the support I got from home and when my colleagues called me, my bosses called me mm-hmm. to find out how I was. And then um, I'm, I'm, I was very blessed in that sense. You know, I had friends from everywhere checking in on me um, to remind me that I would get well and I would get back and they can't wait to have me back. I think um, for those who are 
who have survived, I think it will be helpful for us to speak up about our experiences and to give, give back to the community by helping others who have just been diagnosed or helping others who have gone through. Um, it will, if you don't want to be seen doing this, you can always join our group on Facebook. You know, you can do it uh, from the comfort of your computer mm -hmm. and they may never have to see you. Um, for those who are going through treatment, um, regardless of what stage you are at, um, you will get over it. Science is fantastic. There are many, many new options now. And I was diagnosed six years ago. And in just six years right now, I've heard that there are other kinds of drugs. There are other kinds of tests to help improve or increase your chances of living a very meaningful and healthy life after cancer.